Coach, Kansas, who well, do you know? Uh, we got one of their basketballs to practice with. I know that. We're fired up about that. Uh, that's, that's Amber Shirees at her finest, getting us down to the detail. We're working out with the ball we're going to play with. 6-0, uh, and oh, um, you know, a team that's played a lot of different styles against a lot of different teams so far. They've all been at home. Uh, they haven't been on the road yet. Uh, so it would be a good challenge for us to go in there and try to get one in Fog Island Field House. A great um, – cultural trip for our kids to be able to see the rules of basketball out in the Hall of Fame that they have out there and it's going to be a really fun trip. What do you I was looking they, they got a lot of JUCO transfers. Yep. Hard to hard to kind of scout and figure out what we just been talking to Raven. Raven knows them all. <laughs> She's like, Coach, we played against her. We played against her. So we're really relying on uh, R&B, Raven North Cross, Baker, North Cross Baker, as we like to call her, R&B. I can't spread it out. So she knows all those kids. And uh, we've got a practice player that played in that league as well, and she's been helping us a lot. So, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Todd's got six films on him, and you give that guy six films on a team, and he can figure them out pretty quick. Talk about Kiara Williams, Coach, just her ability to yeah. you know, give you that inside presence that's going to do some of the dirty work. Yeah, really has embraced her role, hasn't she? The people that have seen her play, um, she's really taken on that um, – role of starting our transition. You know, a lot of a lot of people give your guards credit for transition, but it starts with your post players that run to the rim, and Kiera's really uh, done that at a high level for us. You know, we've kind of played that two-headed monster in there with her and Taylor together, and, uh, you know, they're getting us double-figure points and rebounds. But Kiera, uh, from day one, uh, came to me saying, I, I really want to help, and I, I think I can bring some team, the team uh, a couple of things. She's our, our most energetic, positive kid on the bench. She doesn't let anybody, uh, anything that anybody says get to her, uh, and she just goes out and does her job, and she's done it really well for us. She's had to you know, battle some kids three or four inches bigger than her, giving away 30, 40 pounds of strength, and uh, she's been a huge key. We've been able to go inside to her. You know, there's a lot of games we start the first play of the game trying to throw it in there to her to establish inside uh, presence, and she's done a great job. I feel like your defense has, has steadily gotten a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it will. Yeah, yeah just it, our offense is always a little bit ahead, and there's so many what-ifs sure. in defense, and we choose to build it slowly. Uh, and we get exposed sometimes early in the year as a result of that. But I do think we're making progress. Um, our rebounding's consistently improved. Our effort, Coach uh, Love, it does a great job of charting that and giving the kids immediate feedback on their effort on the boards. And as a result, I think uh, we've held our own against a couple teams that are good rebounding teams. Arkansas has done a really good job of taking care of the basketball. Is that kind of a testament to the team chemistry, or is that something y'all – uh, yes, it is that. It, it's, you know, you are what you count, and we hate turnovers. Uh, you know, you, you can't score. Uh, we've never, ever scored a basket on a turnover in the history of the game. But every now and then, uh, even if you take a rush shot, sometimes those things go in and they create offensive uh, rebounds and they create fouls. So turnovers are a point of emphasis in every drill that we do. Um, I think we do a few things strategically as well. We don't allow passes to go to certain places on the floor at certain times, and they've really, really embraced that. We're not a great shooting team. I mean, that's just one of those things. That we're, we're, we're not great shooters, so we have to get more shots than everybody else. And the way you do that is play fast and function fast, and you don't turn it over. And then at the end of the game, you look up, and even though they shot significantly better percentage than you did, you took more shots and – as long as we're keeping score by who has the most points at the end of the game, that's going to be something we focus on. But uh, we do we do count that. We talk about it. We chart it. And, you know, as a result, it's important to them. And, and they've done a really good job with that. You made the comment, I guess, a while back about being a little stubborn at times. You think? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just from a defensive standpoint, this team with being undersized and those sort of things, to force you to play zone Some. more than you want? Not really. I mean, okay. I, I don't mind playing zone. I, I'm not one of these thinks that zone is a, is a bad I word. I, I think yeah. it's – in fact, I think it's harder to play zone sometimes than it is, man. The accountability uh, goes down. I think it takes longer to teach zone. But um, what we're trying to do is – we treat every preparation like we're trying to beat South Carolina or Mississippi State or Tennessee, the teams at the top of our leagues, defensively. We don't spend a whole lot of time on the other team's actions and specific sets. We're trying to be the best team we can be. And so as a result, sometimes we get exposed because we didn't go over a certain play. But that's okay with us because we know when we get in league – this is going to happen and work better for us when we get to that point. So I think that stubbornness is a good thing 
sometimes. Uh, other times it could probably uh, cost us a few points in games, but I hope it never costs us a full game. Does it help your team adjust to make adjustments within yes. the game? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. If you're dependent on simply um, recalling from practice, well, this player goes here when they do this and look – if you can learn concepts and then go out and make those things habits, then I think it allows you to adjust. I think it allows you to not have to make adjustments. They do those things on their own. Uh, but I'm glad that we have a, a comfort level of playing both man and zone. Uh, I know when teams have to prepare for us, they have to, we steal their practice time because you literally have to prepare for a little bit of everything. Um, and we're going to continue to have to be able to do that, I think. You know, we're not trying to trick people, but we are trying to confuse them a little bit. Um, slow starts are something that mm. has been pretty common in a couple of the games, but it wasn't the case in this last game. What changed with you guys? We did change some things. We didn't come in as early. Uh, we changed uh, the way we did a shoot around. Uh, I changed how many things I wrote up on the board. Uh, we had, you were very nice when you said a few games. It was actually every game we had played. Uh, we'd gotten off to a slow start. So I, I think there were a lot of factors. I don't think it's ever usually one thing. Uh, but I think we were getting to the gym too early. I think we were uh, spending too much time there getting losing our focus. Uh, so we changed some things tactically. Uh, and then we changed some things that we did in, in the presentation of the scouting report and the way that we went about preparing. And, you know, hopefully that's one of the keys. We'll find out if we can do it back-to-back -back games or if it was just the outlier. I don't know. But uh, we're always going to be tweaking. We're all so brand new with each other. It's, it's, that's the fun part about this is everything we do is the first time we've done some things. And some things work and some things don't. I'm not stubborn enough to stick to things. like I am willing to change. Uh, stubborn and willingness to change maybe don't go hand in hand. But I am willing to listen and change and uh, talk to our kids about it. They're the ones that have to go out there and play. So I asked some of our seniors, and they say, I think we're getting there too early. Um, some of our, not seniors, but returners and dev. Uh, so uh, we made some changes. Do you have, you know, from the standpoint of Kansas, an opponent, have you looked at them specifically? They're yeah. not real big. No, they're, they're, um, they're going to be very much like uh, a, a UTEP team without their big kid. Yeah. With you know minus the six four, they have a big kid, but she's not near as athletic as as the the uh, player from UTEP was. But uh, they're going to be rugged like Nebraska, uh, but I think they're going to play more. You know, Brandon uh, Coach Steiner comes from a, a basketball family. His dad's a legend. He's got brothers. Everybody, I'm sure their family get-togethers are like coaching clinics. Uh, he's a really offensive-minded guy. You're going to see a lot of different looks. Um, we, we've not faced anybody that's got as many offensive uh, attacks as they have. Um, you know, they took a tremendous blow when they lost Jessica Washington in the preseason. This kid's a potential All-American, and I know that a lot of their game plan had been built around her. So they're still even six games in adjusting to that, but got a big-time scorer in Kapadic, Um and we'll have to use Chelsea Dungy today to simulate her. That's the one great thing about having IT and Chelsea out here. You know, we, we're talking a lot about players that are playing in games, but the, the roles that Chelsea and IT are putting on in practice, if if we can guard those two guys, it, then you get to the games, and we can pretty much guard about anybody. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. You bet.